I was having a wonderful, peaceful conversation with this guy named Anthony Weiner. I don't know if you're familiar with the guy or not. Yeah. He's, a, he's a very, uh, you know, int- I, interesting guy. I saw guy. that podcast. Yeah. So, so, and I ask him a question uh, where I say, so let me ask you, how good are you at giving blowjobs? And he looks at me like, what kind of a freaking question is that? He says, I'm sorry? And I said, yeah, how good are you at giving it? He says, no. I said, when you were 11 years old, did anybody teach you how to give one? No. Why would they teach me that? That's what they're teaching in schools right now in many different places. Oh, they're not doing that. They're not doing There's no way they're doing that. There right? are books that do show that. Yeah. There are books, right? Yeah. Okay. So if a person wants to sell that book at Barnes & Noble, go for it. If a person wants to sell that book on Amazon, go for it. But what do you think about parents that are protesting all over the place where in some districts, these guys are saying, no, this is recommended reading by the teacher and it's normal, it's okay, you should learn about this at an early age. How do you feel about that? Well, I think it's very clear that there are certain teachers that have an agenda and that their agenda is to indoctrinate children into this LBGT mindset and that this is uh, not just cherished but celebrated. And, you know, if you're talking to someone who is a gay kid, great. That's great. If you want to tell them that it's okay to be great gay and, you know, you should be your true self, great. That's terrific. What my concern with is that a lot of what we're seeing with, like, New Jersey had an uptick in kids identifying as non-binary by 4,000%. Like, mm-hmm. it's not natural. These are not normal yeah. numbers. And I think children are very malleable. They're very impressionable. And if you reward them for certain kinds of behavior, if they are, they are praised and cherished for certain types of behavior, I think they'll be encouraged to do that. And I think you're seeing with a lot of these detransitioners that a lot of these kids got encouraged early and got put on hormone blockers and hormones and got mastectomies and got castrated. And now they have deep regret. And people don't want to acknowledge that. And they attack those people. They attack those detransitioners. We have always, always thought that young children are not capable of making life-changing decisions at an early age. That's why we don't allow seven-year-olds to get tattooed. And now all of a sudden you're allowing seven-year-olds to say that I'm a girl or I'm a boy, cut off my breasts and put me on testosterone. Yeah. That's craziness. What percentage of parents do you actually think? Obviously, we don't know the exact number, but what percentage of parents, left, right, middle, think that's okay? What do you think that percentage is? That's interesting. I would not know. I would just be wildly guessing. What do you but th- there's even a, if we there's guess, a certain what amount say? of people that are in the progressive mindset that is essentially a cult. The, the, it's, look, there's cult-like thinking on both the sure. right and on yeah, the left. Absolutely. It's yeah. cult thinking. It's uh, conglomerations of opinions that you adopt and you defend because that keeps you in the tribe. And the LBGT, whatever the other numbers are in letters, mm-hmm. that th- what that is, is it's a, it's a flag that you're flying to show that you're on the right team, that you're progressive, you're open-minded, you're on the right side of history, yeah. you're inclusive, you know, this, this is what they're doing. And that, that has an effect on people psychologically. I think you should allow people to be who they are. And you should be open to people being who they are, no matter what it is. But to encourage them to go in a specific direction, I think that's there's real repercussions for that. And I think you're seeing that with these detransitioners. You think it's 1%, 5%, 10%, 15%. You think it's 20 plus? Like if you were to guess. I don't think it's 20 plus. I, I don't think, think so a, either. It's a, yeah. I think it's a vocal minority. The same thing with uh, people that think that trans athletes should be able to compete with women and biological women in women's sports. It's a very small, very loud minority. Do you think that's kind of like, let's just say I'm your friend, okay? And we're out at a restaurant. And you know how there's the guys that uh, all of a sudden somebody's going to say, Joe, you're picking up a topic. We're having dinner. We're having a conversation. Hey, what do you think about voting this way? And one of your friends, this guy feels like I have to agree with 100% of what Joe says because it's Joe. Joe's my boy. Joe said this. Joe, you're 100% right. And then you got one of your friends like, I don't know if I agree with you, man. I think it's this, 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 and you're having a debate. Do you think there's a part of the political party where they feel like just because I'm a Democrat, I have to agree with 100% of what everything they're pitching me? There's a bunch of people like that. Yeah, there's a bunch of like full-on cultists, and they're blue no matter who. Yeah. And that's, that's their, their mind and in their social circle. Like this is how you talk and communicate. 
And, you know, I've had conversations with those people, particularly when I was in L.A. And when you confront them with facts, they're in denial. First of all, they don't know the facts. They're in denial about it. They, they think that what you're saying is propaganda, that what you're saying is, is right wing bullshit and conspiracy theories. You know, I remember when I first started talking to Jordan Peterson about that bill, what is it, C-16 that's up in Canada that is a, a hate speech law that that mandates you using whatever the person's preferred pronouns are. And at that point, there were like 48 different mm -hmm. preferred pronouns that we're going to mandate. And people are like, why are you concentrating on that? This is something that exists in colleges. This is not something in, in your world. Like, why, why is that of concern to you? Because... People graduate from college and they take these ideas they've been indoctrinated yeah. with and then they enter into the workforce and that's what we're seeing. And that's what killed Bud Light. That's literally what killed Bud Light, that they tried to enforce these ideas that they had been ingrained with in, in these educational institutions and then they tried to put it out there in the world. Yeah. So, so uh, uh, Joe, how old are you? You're, 55. Okay. I'm 44. Okay. I'll be 56 in a couple of weeks. So You'll be 56. Well, you look great for a 56-year-old. I'm just looking at your place. You're walking on, walk, walking behind you. I'm like, holy shit, this guy's in shape. So, But, okay, 55, you're going to be 56. From your experience at this age, when did you and I care the most about what people thought? What age were you when we cared the most about what people thought? When I was a kid. Okay, yeah. fair enough. Okay. Yeah. So how little do you give a shit about what people think about you today? Well, I don't want people to be wrong. I don't want people to have uh, an incorrect opinion about my position and sure. things or who I but am. But do you lose sleep at night? No. With people? Okay, so that's the point. So, but, uh, but also you and I are used to dealing with the opinions of an enormous amount of people. Totally agree. Totally agree. But let's not pick people like you and I. Let's pick okay. a regular guy. One of your guys out there, you know, that, that uh, I won't mention names that, you know, he's always with you. Um, do you think he cares more at 42 years old? what I think about him? Less. Be, less, yeah. right? Okay. Well, so, it's life experience, right? So let me ask you this question. As a 55-year-old man, if you were really gay right now, Joe, would you care about coming out? I wouldn't, but I do have friends that are my age that do care, and it's sad. Okay. It's, it's, and they would, but they're worried more about how their family is going to perceive it and how their, you know, their family's going to be treated about it. <laughs> you know, by the way, I'm not trying to convert you to, you know, for both of us right now to That's make okay. an announcement, public announcement right now. <laughs> Joe Rogan and Patrick Bay David came out and... Uh, we're both getting married. We're both getting married. <laughs> Who takes whose last name? So... We'll hyphenate it. <laughs> like good progressives. When I see a dude with a hyphenated name, I'm like, yo, bro. <laughs> yo, I got a hyphenated last name, Bet hyphen David. But I understand Rogan, Bet David, or Bet David Rogan. So I want you to think about this. The part where I go is the following. The statistic, traditionalists, 0.8% mm -hmm. are gay. Boomers, 2.6%. Then it goes to 5 point something. Then it goes 10%. Is it really 10%? Oh, yeah. Gen Z's right now is 21%. How much of them are regretful? Do you want to pull this? Can, uh, Jamie, can you 21 look this? 21% gay? 21% of Gen Z right now is gay. Identified. Is it gay or LBGTQ? L all that stuff. Because all you, the, can, you can be non-binary and slip right in there with like a, a real Joe, fucking loophole. Check that out. Look at that right Number there. Number of LBGTQ identifying adults is soaring. Yeah. Look at that. 0.8% traditionals. Boomers 2.6, Gen X 4.2, Millennials 10.5, and then you got Gen Z's around 21%, right? Okay. So when you look at the statistics, why would Gen Z become gay? They care about what other people think. You know, this is like, right. you, you know, it's kind of Young. versus the traditionalist. Dude, if I'm like 72 years old and I'm gay, guess what? I'm coming out. Right. I'm mean like, hey, man. I yeah. am. What do you want to do about it? I'm going right. to go and hang out with Jose over here. Yeah, and leave me alone. Leave me alone. Do what you got to do. So I think, you know, we're truly messing up with a generation that really cares about what other people think, and we're screwing them up in a big way. We're also, they're growing up in a time of social media where caring about what other people think is way more enforced because you're getting so much more feedback than people have ever gotten before. Yeah. Like a regular person might just be communicating with thousands of people in comments and, and arguing about things on, on social media yeah. in, a, in a way where you would not interact with so many random people that you don't know. Yeah. So, and, and even you, that's a good point. Like even the social dilemma thing, kind of like where you're going, where these kids are so worried about what other people think. Yeah. I think, I think we're, uh, I think it's a, um, 
I think it's a big mistake, and I think we're going to pay a price for it. Uh, uh, and it's going to take us a decade or two to see the results of this. I think so too, and I think there's going to be a self-correcting thing. What what fear? What I fear the most is the detransitioners. I feel terrible for them. I feel terrible for these girls that can never have children now, and I te- feel terrible for these guys that are castrated and. It's just the the whole thing is just very spooky because people are making life changing decisions. Now, the, does the, does that mean that I'm anti trans? Not at all. If you're a grown adult and you feel like that's going to make you happy, mm. I'm with. I fully support your ability as a grown adult to do whatever you want, mm-hmm. as long as it's not hurting anyone else. That makes you happy. Sure. If that makes you happy, yeah. I don't know what makes you happy. If that makes you happy. I, I am a freedom person. I believe you should have freedom to do whatever you want. However, I do think that there's an indoctrination aspect to this. And I do think there's a social contagion aspect to this. And that's what Abigail Schreier has uh, documented. And that a lot of these girls that are coming out, they're doing in these clusters of girls. And a lot of them are autistic. A lot of them are, you know, they're on a spectrum. And they don't feel like they fit in anyway. When they give them testosterone, a lot of times there's an alleviation of anxiety that comes with testosterone yep. and a euphoria that comes with that. And they say, okay, this is who I've meant to be. Which is so crazy that introducing a foreign substance into your body, or at least a substance that your body does not naturally have at masculine doses, and that you're introducing that to a feminine body and then saying, this is who I naturally am. That's crazy. That doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense biologically, scientifically. It doesn't make sense. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.